This is the Padua Podcast Network. And they found that the more of the brain they removed, the less they remembered about the maze. But it didn't seem to matter which part of the brain was removed. Running a Fever, episode 266, The Memory Thief by Lauren Aguirre. Welcome to Running a Fever. I'm Michael Davis. This is a podcast about fitness, diet, and medicine, not necessarily in that order. And we're all about having a long, healthy, happy, active life right up to the very end. And I hope that's what you want. And you're in the right place if you do. Today is great because that's exactly one of the things that we're talking about here. Living a long life. This book, I think, adds into it, although... It's not specifically about longevity. It talks about the brain and memory, and that definitely falls into the category of uh, healthy, happy, and active. And uh, there is a sort of subtext of Alzheimer's research in here as well, although that's not specifically what it's about. Now, this is a brand new book. Uh, It was a gift from my mother, who knows I'm interested in stuff like this, and in neuroscience, and I was very interested. First of all, it's written well. I mean, you don't have to be a doctor or a scientist to understand it, and uh, Lauren Aguirre is a journalist, and that helps. It's a medical mystery, so-called, and it tells the story of the discovery of opioid-associated amnestic syndrome. Basically, the use of opioids, particularly fentanyl, can lead to serious damage in the area of the brain responsible for memory encoding, the hippocampus. Now, if that rings a bell, it could be because we've discussed the hippocampus before in our Dementia series, episode 233, How the Brain Works, Memory, which, of course, you can get at runningafever.com slash 233. Now, two ideas in this book particularly intrigued me. Um, I I highly recommend it, but I'm not going to go through a a really long review of it. But two ideas were were particularly intriguing. The first is that memory is stored all over the brain. An experiment was done in which mice were allowed to learn how to navigate a maze. Then they had surgery in which a part of their brain was removed. And they found that the more of the brain they removed, the less they remembered about the maze. But it didn't seem to matter which part of the brain was removed meaning that memory is stored in fragments all over the brain. And that the hippocampus kind of serves as a a directory listing of where that stuff is. Now, the second idea is that memories change as they are recalled and affected by other experiences. This was demonstrated using a genetically engineered mouse whose brain responded to light impulses fed into it by fiber optics. The mouse was put in a warm, dark room with an orange smell, allowed to explore, move around, and its brain activity was located, uh, which area of the brain was affected, using the fiber optics. Now, then they moved it into a bright, almond-scented room, something completely different, and they added mild electric shocks, which, chen- you know, they're added to areas and. You know, if if the uh, mouse moves, they get shocked, a mild shock that's basically just surprising, not really painful. And what happens is when they're exposed to that, then they they learn that if they move, they get shocked. So they freeze, right? So this was in the new environment, and it made the mouse freeze to avoid the shocks. Now, while in the room, the same areas of the brain were stimulated, the same areas that, you know, fired off neurons are fired off, you know, electrical signals back in the original area. They found out what areas those brains were, and they put it in a new environment, gave it a little shock, and fired off, you know, stimulated those same areas of the brain. Now, when it returned to the first room, it froze as if avoiding shocks. And the conclusion is that memories change. So that's very interesting. The things that you remember have been affected by other things that have happened in your life, and especially when those memories come up. Uh, Fentanyl is the drug that they're really talking about in this book, and it's widely used as a general anesthetic. If you've had surgery, you probably had fentanyl. Uh, Some patients experience memory loss after surgery, and it's known to produce loss of memory of the time during which the patient is under its influence. 
So this is something that definitely needs further study. But the studies outlined in the book include memory loss due to the overdose of fentanyl, which is also very popular as an illegally obtained drug uh, and is abused in that way. Now, if you're into neuroscience like I am, you'll probably you'll definitely enjoy this book uh, because it's uh, it's got all kinds of cool neuroscience in there. But uh, again, I am not a medical doctor or a professional neuroscientist. I consider myself kind of an amateur one, but uh, I was able to understand the whole thing. So uh, it's called The Memory Thief by Lauren Aguirre. And if you get this on Amazon, be sure to go to smile.amazon.com. You can set up a charity and they will give uh, part of the money that you pay to the charity. And one of the charities is the network, the podcast network that Running a Fever is a part of. It is called the Padua Podcast Network. But when you sign up for smile.amazon.com, you want to put in the St. Anthony of Padua Educational Association. And you can help out the podcast network in that way if you don't already have another charity that you'd like them to donate to. And until next time... I'm Michael Davis. This is Running a Fever. If you got the fever, keep it. If you don't, go out and catch it. And I'll talk to you next time on Running a Fever.